In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a step by step process, time slip review, breakdown, round by round of a track that we've never been to before. Stay tuned. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be breaking down our time slips at Byron Dragways Firecracker Bracket Nationals on their 30K Friday. This is a track that we have never been to before, so this is all sorts of new stuff that's coming to us as we were seeing it. Before we get into today's video, if you are new to this channel and you like any kind of bracket racing or drag racing kind of content, this channel's for you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so that you don't miss a beat. Again, in today's video, we're gonna be breaking down round by round everything that we go through, the thought process, the strategy, and things that we see on the track as the race plays out. If you're ready, let's get on track. Let's go. All right, guys, we're about ready to roll up for round number one, entry number one. Uh, we were able to squeeze out a couple time trial passes here. Uh, went 492.8 and a 490 with a five, thinking that things got a little bit warmer on the second pass and we're able to loosen up some and my tree I was all over the place on the starting line um, I went with our home track settings on the delay box ended up going 21 red on the first hit put that 21 in the box to see how close we would be to perfect since I figured I had snagged the tree pretty good and ended up being 34 green for the second hit so I was all over the place had no clue really where to set things up so um, was afraid to go red, so we took a little bit out of the delay box for first round and uh, kind of just went with that. And then we weren't really sure where exactly to dial at, so I wasn't, I was putting more confidence into our second time run, um, running the 90 with a 5. So we decided that we were probably going to be holding about 1 or 2 is kind of what we thought we would be at. So we decided to throw a 93 on it. And our opponent was dialed in at a 473. Lucky for us, he ended up turning it 14 red while we were 33 green. Um, so we got kind of lucky there. Now he was 21 above and I was 11 under the dial in. Running a 491.9 on a 493. He goes 475.1 on a 473. So rolling in for round one, entry number two. Um, again, this is our first time on this track, so we were kind of just, everything was new to us as we were making passes and trying to make adjustments and not sure where to set things up at, um, not sure what to trust as far as reaction times or as far as uh, ETs were going until we got some more data. because We had no data whatsoever to go off. I did take a little bit more out of the delay box to try to set us up a little bit better, but it doesn't help when you just sit and stare at the tree. I ended up going 66 up front. So uh, he, got, he goes 462 dial, I'm 493 dial. At this point, I knew I was late, so I figured I was gonna get down and let him, he's gonna pass me. I figured I was gonna push him out to the very last second, grab the brakes, and try to cut him loose and send him. I did that, I ended up going dead zero, 493-0 on the 493, and his vantage in the starting line was just so good that he ended up going 17 thou above, still taking 33 stripe that I fed him. So good thing there's a buyback table and we were able to take some good advantage of that. We were actually able to chase. I kept the 493 dialing on there, figured the car had started repeating numbers so i wanted to uh stay holding one or two numbers he dialed in at a 513 to my 493 so i'd actually get a pretty good look at this race because there wasn't really going to be too much difference in the starting line Lucky for us, we did have a small advantage at the starting line. I was 14 up front. He was 38 bulb. Now we got down to a point where I felt pretty good about the reaction time 
and I knew I was holding a little bit, so I figured what I would do is get down and try to pace him once I got in front of him. And that's kind of what we did here. I ended up taking 7 thou at the stripe to go 496-0 on a 493 dial. And he goes 514-3 on the 513 dial in with an 038 reaction time. So that set us up to have both entries back into the main race into round number two. Entry number one rolls up. I decided to stay with the 493 number. Um, we were going against a 475. We ended up being 013 a piece on the starting line, so we were identical on the tree. I figured at this point I was gonna try to make it as tight as I could. And in fact, I did do that, but I gave it back by one thou. I guess I didn't really need to make it as tight as I was trying to. I ended up going 18 above, and he ended up going 17 above. So I gave the strike back by a thou. I still could have probably taken it by 10, and we would have been we would have been okay with that. So rolling in for our second entry in round two, we got pushed over to the right lane. We had not been there yet. Our both our time runs were in the left lane, trying to you know trying to figure out some consistency in the track and and on the tree. I wasn't sure what the track was going to give us as far as consistency from one lane to another. So we decided to keep the 493 on there. He goes 485 dialing. I figured things would be pretty tight. I would still get a pretty good look at how the race was playing out. I do turn on a 35 bulb. He happened to miss it more than I did. He was 42 up front, I was 35. And he got to a point where he was in front of me and I wasn't sure how my reaction time was, but I just knew that I was holding. I got to a point on the track where I was in the throttle for I felt too long. So I figured at this point, I'm probably breaking out and he's ahead of me. So I was gonna try to drop him last second. I fed him 9,000 stripe, double breakout situation. I go under by 1,000. He goes up under by 17,000. Getting into round three, we got back into the left lane. We were chasing again here. Uh, the dialings were nice and tight. I was uh, 493, I decided to keep the number there and he was dialed in at 502. Something you probably can't see here, once he fully stages and he sets his trans brake button, he actually rolls back out of the stage beam and I don't think he caught it right away. As I get in and he almost gets timed out here. Um, I think he was flustered, he finally gets in. He goes 158 bulb to my 34. As you can see, we get about 300 feet down the track and he is way behind me. So I wasn't sure if he was late or if he was having car problems, but I caught it soon enough and decided to not make it very tight at the finish line. I didn't need to. And I ended up taking 90 stripes still, cutting about 12 mile an hour, going 499.3 on a 93 dial in. And he goes 504.9 on a 502 dial in. And again, the difference on the reaction times were, uh, were quite a bit. He was 158 to my 034. That sets us up into round four. We almost lost lane choice again here. Everybody wanted to go into the left lane. Um, he's dialed in at 463. I decided to keep the 493 since the car had been repeating. I figured I wasn't gonna see him again till late in the run. I had to be ready to hit the brakes. Lucky for us, he ended up turning it 8th out red. I ended up going 31 green. Not anything stellar here for as far as reaction times go, but it was getting the job done. I go 15th out under, going 91 with a 5 on a 93. He goes 8th out red and goes 458.4 on his 463 down. So he was holding on to
Rolling in for round number five, we decided to just jump over to the right lane because we didn't want to get into a thing where we weren't sure on if we were going to end up losing lane choice or not. So instead of just guessing, we decided to just try to set up to be in the right lane for the remainder of the day. I kept with the 493 dial in. Now we're at a point in time in the day where it should be cooling off. It was about 8 o'clock at night. The track had all sorts of shade on the right lane. I wasn't sure how much it was going to pick up, but I figured it would. I guess hindsight 2020, we should have dialed down at least one. That would have been, we would have been able to see things maybe a little differently. Probably not. He was dialed 445. So we ended up letting go 32 up front to his 27, so he had a 5 foul advantage at the starting line. I just could not see him in time, and the car picked up so much. I had my fastest 60 foot and fastest 330 of the day, and it was probably on an 89 or 90 pass. Didn't cut out a whole lot of a mile an hour, but caught him at the very, very last second out of the corner of my eye, and it was just too late, taking 28 stripe, ended up losing on a breakout. Going under 91 1 on a 93. He goes 446 4 on his 45 dial in. That'll do it for this video, guys. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you guys like this kind of content and want to see more of it, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, let us know what you think, let us know what you like, don't like. I am by far no expert when it comes to this stuff, but if you like this video, hit that like button, turn on those notifications so you guys don't miss anything, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in another video.